In this video, we're going to look at black body radiation, the Planck distribution, and band emission. Black body radiation. A black body, in terms of radiation, is a perfect emitter and absorber of radiation at all wavelengths and in all directions. We have this expression for the radiation intensity for a black, uh, for a black body emitter as a function of wavelength and temperature, where we have Planck's constant and the Boltzmann constant and the speed of uh, light appearing in there. In order to use this, we probably want to integrate it over the hemisphere. And of course, because a black body is a perfect emitter and absorber in all directions, our radiation intensity is not a function of direction, and we can simply multiply by pi, which recall was integrating our intensity over the hemisphere, in order to get our spectral hemispherical emissive power, the total watts per meter squared per wavelength uh, coming through my hemisphere. And so we have this nice expression for that. We can easily implement a Python function in order to start playing with that. And of course, when you do that, you notice you have to be a little bit careful because we're working with wavelengths in micrometers, uh, not meters. And so you have to be a little bit careful with the units uh, when you look at this. But if we start to look at this, now remember this is radiation, so everything has to be in units of absolute temperature and units of Kelvin. And so let's start with a rather cold surface. Let's take a surface at 50 degrees Kelvin and we'll plot this distribution as a function of wavelength. It's on a logarithmic scale here and a logarithmic scale here. And you see that we have this nice distribution here. We have the longer uh, wavelengths are represented and not the shorter wavelengths. As we start to increase that temperature, we notice two things. One, we're starting to get representation of lower and lower wavelengths, and the magnitude of the emissive power is increasing quite dramatically. Of course, this peak, that, that wavelength at which the maximum emissive power occurs, is moving to shorter and shorter wavelengths. Now, 300 Kelvin is about what we expect from an object uh, uh, relatively close to room temperature. As we increase the temperature, we'll start to see uh, the temperature is, say, 1,000 Kelvin. This trend continues. We're going to lower and lower wavelengths, and we're, again, dramatically, remember it's a logarithmic scale, dramatically increasing at the emissive power as we go to those higher temperatures. And as we increase to even higher temperatures, uh, 5,800 is often used as the temperature that, that represents the black body emission from the sun. We see that we've gone to much, much shorter wavelengths again, and again, much higher emissive powers. And if we plot on this, the visible part of the spectrum, going from our uh, violet to our red, we see that that's a really small part of the energy over all of these wavelengths. So what we see, the visible part of the spectrum of the energy coming from the sun, is really quite a small percentage of the total energy uh, that we have coming from there. And we also see that as a surface is cool, it's not emitting in the... In the um, visible spectrum at all. You've got to get up to a certain temperature before you start to see uh, energy being emitted in the visible part of the spectrum that you'd be able to see with your eye. And so that's why thermal cameras are useful at these lower temperatures, because of course if we can see the infrared spectrum, uh, we can see the emission from surfaces that are at temperatures uh, much closer to the temperatures that we're experiencing in day-to-day -day life. If we connect the lines uh, that join the maximum in, this, in each curve at each temperature, we find that there's a very nice relation that comes out. The, the wavelength, where the maximum emissive power occurs, multiplied by the temperature, is equal to this constant, 2898 micrometers Kelvin. And that's Wien's displacement law. It enables you to calculate uh, what the wavelength of the maximum emissive power is uh, for any given temperature. Now, what is the Stefan's Boltzmann law that we've been using since the beginning of the course? If we integrate Planck's distribution, this distribution, of course, is over wavelengths. It's the spectral distribution. So if we integrate over all wavelengths of what the black body <coughs> um, spectral emission is, we get the total energy in watts per meter squared for that given distribution. So here's an example where the distribution is at 1,000 Kelvin, and I'm integrating the area underneath that curve to get the total watts per meter squared uh, in that distribution. And if I do that, here I've done it in Python, I'm integrating, numerically integrating it, and now I'm going to divide my answer uh, by t to the fourth. 
and I find that when I divide that answer by t to the fourth, I get this number, 5.67036 uh, times 10 to the minus 8. I'm going to repeat that at 3000 Kelvin, integrate again that distribution with a temperature of uh, 3000 Kelvin, and I find again when I take that quantity, Eb, the, 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 if I take that integration and divide by the temperature, 3000 uh, raised to the fourth power, I get exactly the same number again. And of course, that is what the Stefan-Boltzmann constant is. That's where the Stefan-Boltzmann constant comes from, is from integrating this Planck uh, distribution. <clears throat> and so we see that the total uh, emission from the black body, Eb, is equal to sigma t to the fourth, where sigma is the Stefan-Boltzmann constant 5.67, or in higher precision here, times 10 to the 8 watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth. And so we can calculate our total emissive power um, and see very clearly that it's a function of temperature. Now, the next important subject is band emission. We may be interested in finding out how much energy is between a certain range of wavelengths. And you can look at tabulated numbers in your textbook, for example, in order to find these functions, these f0 to lambdas. That is taking the integral from a wavelength of 0 up to a chosen wavelength lambda of my black body distribution. And it's the fraction that is in that range from 0 to lambda compared to the integration of the entire uh, spectrum. And so it tells you the fraction that's in that band of wavelengths. And of course, we know that this total integration on the bottom is sigma t to the fourth, and so it's that integral from zero to lambda of the, of the Planck distribution uh, relative to sigma t, or over sigma t to the fourth. And that, of course, is a function of lambda t. And so that's the way it's tabulated. If you're looking at a table, uh, you will find your lambda t, find this number, and use it, and then use that to do your calculations. Of course, if we're working at a computer, we can do these integrations ourselves, and there's no need for those tables whatsoever. Now, we very often want to know not what it is from zero to some number, but in some specific band. For example, you might want to know uh, how much energy is in the visible range. Not at 1,000 Kelvin, obviously you'd have to be at a higher temperature, but you may want to know what it is. But of course, that's a simple manipulation. If I want to know the fraction of radiation that's in the band lambda 1 to lambda 2, in this case 1 to 10, then I can simply take the amount that's from 0 to lambda 2 and subtract it from the range from the amount that's in the range 0 to lambda 1, and that will, of course, give me this difference here. And that's how I can calculate how much of the energy is in a specific band of my spectrum. So let's look at a very quick example of that. Let's imagine that a tungsten filament light bulb, the kind of light bulbs that we used to use, um, that it's, it radiates like a black body at a temperature of 2800 Kelvin. So I plotted the Planck distribution here. Of course, that's the emissive power in watts per meter squared per micrometer over uh, the range where there's any significant energy in there. And I want to know how much of that falls into the visible, into the visible spectrum. So I've overlaid the visible here. And you can see right away that it's a relatively small percentage of this. But let's see exactly how much it is. In order to do that, we're going to have to calculate. Of course, we could look up into our tables and say that the amount that falls into the visible spectrum, if we looked up our uh, band emission functions, we could look for this fraction that is from 0 to 0 0.7 uh, micrometers, and we could subtract from it the fraction that is 0 to 0 0.4 uh, micrometers and see how much of that total energy is actually useful for us in providing light. And so I'm going to do this numerically. I'll integrate the, the Planck distribution from 0 to infinity, and I will integrate it in the visible range from 0.4 micrometers to 0.7 micrometers. I will divide those two things, and that will give us the amount of energy that's in this band or the shaded region on my chart over here. And of course, that gives us a number that is less than 6%. So you can see why less than 6% of the energy that goes in to making that tungsten filament radiate at 2800 Kelvin is actually giving us useful visible light. And the rest of this energy is being given off as heat, and of course that's a terrible thing to do if you're trying to air condition your house. You're, you're putting a lot of energy out to those lights that you're simply having to use more energy in order to remove from your house with your air conditioner. So it's a good thing that we have more efficient lights nowadays, uh, and that's a nice example of looking at these band emission functions for our radiation calculations.